Good morning, and um, we're really happy to be here with you again today. And um, I have with me Coach Makita Hewitt. And um, <laughs> problems logging in. <laughs> yeah, I know. I could see that. Yeah. So just just saying hi to our listeners. And hi, everyone. Welcoming everyone to our broadcast today. So last week we started on mental health issues with children. Today we want to spend some time. If you have anybody before we move on, if you have anybody that I've told you within the last month, week or so, you know, they're having challenges with their child and, um, or you know anybody, please take a moment and share that number or, or that link with them so they can join us on this broadcast this morning. Because what we want to do, we want to talk about um, children with how they come about to have issues and how parents could identify it. And um, if we have enough time, we will go into look at what they can do about it. But we really want to spend some time on that this morning because it's so crucial in terms of um, a child's future, a child's destiny, um, where they end up and what they achieve. So we want to give them, the parents, all the help that they need to be able to help their child to be able to harness their, their strengths, work with them through challenges and come through on the other side. So we, without any ado, we're gonna go right in. And Makita, this morning we want, to, we want to hone in on parents mm -hmm. at the beginning mm -hmm. in terms of, um, we want to help parents, we want to support parents um parenting is a challenging job and parents always all most times have complex issues that they're dealing with in terms of they have the their own sometimes internal battles but then they have or relational issues they have sometimes work and financial issues and um their own spiritual and everything else but then they also have the responsibility this child and so they need to manage all that they have as well as support this child in their upbringing in their own challenges and make it work for the child so that this child could come out um, on the other side and when I say on the other side will come through you know anything that they have to face but we'll come through whole and we'll come through in a in a good place. So with regards to the mental health issue, and let me give you the number one time so that you can phone in because it would be nice to phone in. So it's 495-0903, that's the local number. And if you are international, just add 868 to that. It's a WhatsApp number as well. Okay, so um, let's start with the parents, um, Makita. What, what do you have to say to parents who are struggling 
with a problematic child? Well, problem, problems with children can come from all different areas. But most of the time, when a child is problematic, they are acting out. They are acting out through pain. They're acting out through confusion. They're acting out that something's happened. Yeah, we know children are going through growth hormones and they can change when they start to get into teenagers. No, we understand all that. But what we're reaching out for is those children that are just acting totally out of character. This child, because a child will change, but they'll still maintain some semblance of their character. But when children act totally out of character, if, if, if children are used to going to a relative and they're happy going there every week and, you know, you all spend time together, but all of a sudden they don't want to go there anymore, there's a reason. You know, if, um, it, it, you know, it could be bullying at school, it could be anything. But I think what, what we're really looking out for is changes within a child that has more likely suffered some sort of abuse. And we're talking about some sort of sexual abuse. Um, you know, I, I came across a conversation I had quite recently um, where a child used to happily, happily go to um, the relatives, the aunt's house all the time, quite happily go there. And, you know, a close knit family. But then all of a sudden now she's saying she doesn't want to go there anymore. There's a reason. And she actually confided in, in another cousin something that her cousin had done to her. And it's about, you know, it doesn't matter how close you are as a family. Yes, there's going to be fallout. There's going to be all sorts of things. But you've got to listen to and believe your child. A child isn't going to make something up like that for nothing. And if they haven't told you, but they've told someone else, they've needed to let it out. And maybe they've told someone else in the hope that that someone else will tell you as the parent because they don't know how to, to have that conversation. Because what's the first thing you're going to say? Oh, no, that can't be true. Oh, your cousin wouldn't do that. Your auntie, would, you know, but let's just, just, just cut all of that out. Your child is sitting in front of you. Mom, dad, this has happened to me. This relative has done this. This family friend has done this. The first thing you've got to say is, as hard as it is, as painful as it is, is I believe you. Even if you have to just take five and say, hold on, go to another room, breathe, scream, do something. But you need to come back in that child because they need to be able to talk to you. You are their place of safety. You are their, you know, you are their confidant. You are the person that they can go to when they cannot go to anybody else. But if they feel that there's an ounce of them that's not being believed, then, then they're going to they're not going to come to you and whatever they go through, they're not going to let you know. And then what will happen is they will grow up with the mental health issues. They will grow up acting out in ways that's not going to be great for them, literally throwing their lives away, all because they're not believed and they cannot talk to you. Thank you. And um, I just want to add to that so that um, if, if you're a parent, and um, your child, as Makita said, is behavior has changed. Now, I want to just share with you some ways that that behavior can change. Mm. So the behavior can change verbally, where the child could become, you know, rude, disinterested, just snappy, irritable, angry, Sometimes physically the child could become violent or you find the child is, you know, um, very, very secretive now. They lock in the bedroom door and um, so they don't want anybody coming close. Sometimes you used to touching your child or hugging your child and now they're cringing mm. and, um, they, you know, they're hiding. They, they, they don't want anybody to see them. They're wrapping themselves in towel and sheets and and some of these behaviors when a child has been interfered with, and, and, and even a teenager, I'm not talking just about little children, bigger ones too. Mm. Um, even adults behave in some similar ways because what happens is that when a person interferes with you, especially sexually against your will, 
They violate your body. They violate you as a person. And that violation, as a result of that, it makes you feel dirty. It makes you feel guilty. It makes you feel unclean. And so when a person or if a child is going through that, you would see the child acting out as um, Makita touched on just now. But you, um, as a parent, you might be thinking, maybe this I need to discipline this child. Or oh, I need to, you know, I need to deal with this behavior because I ain't having that in this house. But when you see your children acting out or um, sometimes even bullying other children, sometimes they, you know, normally helpful and cooperative, they wouldn't do their homework. They're getting into conflict with the, the, the teacher, the head teacher, fighting in school, and every outer character. Everything's changed. Now, some children will go to another extreme, and some children will become so withdrawn and so isolative that um, they now they don't, they lost all interest in people in life. And now, because they're suffering deep, deep hurt, deep distrust in other human beings, because the person that did it to them, they trusted or they um, even loved and, and um, had a good relationship with. So, you know, it could have been an uncle giving you the child presents, a birthday and Christmas, and a lot of abusers, they like to give gifts to children. And they do that to draw the child to mm. them. They in them. Mm. And to get the child to trust them. And then when they turn around and they attack that child or they violate that child, the trust is shattered. But the trust, not only between the both of them, but for a child, remind, remember this child is innocent. So this child grew up, you know, love, you know, loving people, happy-go-lucky, free, want to play, trusting everybody and everything. And so this whole, this child holds a world comes shattering down at this stage. And so you, um, if you could visualize that, then it will be able for you, it will be easy for you now to visualize why some of the behaviors that the child will um, begin to adopt. And um, there's some mental health behaviors which we will probably go into a little later on. But um, but you know, let's just spend a little more time on the behaviors so that parents can be able to pick up those behaviors themselves. And then once we've spent some time on the behaviors, then let us now kind of give some tips to parents, how they can talk to their child to try and get that child, gain that child's trust so that um, that child could be able to tell them what it is that's going on. Well, I mean, the behaviors to look out for definitely is the child changing towards somebody, a family member or a friend or someone. They're just changing. They don't want to be around them. They all, they, they all of a sudden have become very disrespectful towards them for no reason, because you can usually see a buildup or a pattern, you know, disharmony in the home and things. But if there's none of that, but all of a sudden you're noticing this um, withdrawn. And you very unusually withdrawn, not normal, um, maybe not wanting to come home, you know. Um, and for younger children, pay attention to them being withdrawn, not eating, pictures that they may be drawing, because that's how they're expressing themselves. So yes. it, it's really, but, but you know, really they're changing towards people and they're changing towards you as the parent because there's something, they're angry with you, but, but it's because they want to tell you. So they're showing an anger towards you, but they want to talk to you. They want to be able to tell you, but maybe you're challenging them so much about their behavior. You're not actually looking at 
your, your, the cause, what's going on? There's something going on. Um, so, you know, it's so important to communicate, um, you know, watch out for, um, you know, are they doing things like that they weren't doing before? Maybe like stealing, hiding things, just, just real out of character behavior. Because like I said, with all the growth hormones and all of these things, Children will change, they'll grow, they evolve, they're trying to figure out who they are, but it's this extreme difference in their whole personality. If there's any close cousins around that you know that they do speak to, speak to them and friends, you know, is there anything at all that you've noticed that's going on? Is there anything, I'm not asking you to break a confidence, but is there anything that you can tell me? You know, as a parent, you've got a right to do that. But the most important thing for your children to know is it doesn't matter what it is. You can come and tell me, I will believe you. I'm your mom, I'm your dad, I love you. My first and foremost role is to keep you safe. And I want you to be safe. I want you to be comfortable. I want you to feel free to tell me anything you can at all. Also look out for unusual heightened sexual awareness that that wouldn't normally be around the home or or you know because when they're taught in schools they're not taught in that way look out for that and like i said with younger children watch out for some sort of sexual awareness that's come out of the blue and maybe pictures that they're drawing you know pay attention because the children are sitting down drawing all the time and we think oh they're drawing they're coloring in actually pay attention to what they're doing because children will tell you a lot by what they're doing and what they're writing when they're writing stories or when they're saying certain things it's like where did you get that from how do you know that how do you understand that they may make reference to a friend or a family member in a really negative way that that's totally left field where did that come from so it's just really talking to them and drawing it out even maybe telling them a story of someone who was really hurt by someone and you know they told their mum or they told their dad and you know um, they were able to help them you know what do you think about that you know would you ever be able to tell us a story or talk to us and and, and, you know we know these days there's a lot of single parent households but if mum and dad are in the room now I've just got to um, switch there quickly because Um, this uh, um, somebody that I know she was interfered with abused by um, a family member or or a family friend and her dad always used to say if anybody ever interfere with my kids or touch my kids I will kill them that's what stopped her from going to her dad because in her mind if I tell him he'll go to prison so we've got to be very careful of what we say. What we need to do is change that narrative to um, my children will always be able to come to me. If anything like that happens to them, if anyone touches them, they'll always be able to come to me and we can work it out together. But if you talk about killing someone, some children will take that to mean, you know what, I don't want daddy to go to prison. I don't want mummy to go to prison. So I'm going to keep that for myself. And she actually talks about that a lot as a warning to other parents to just be very mindful of what you're saying that could stop your children from opening up to you should anything like that happen to them okay thank you and um i want to give you the numbers again it's 495-0903 and if it's international you just add 868 to that and um, I, I guess I want to just spend a little time um, just talk to parents in terms of why we need to intervene because we are talking about um, intervention. Mm-hmm. Um, Makita was talking about some of the interventions that we can do, but why do we? Why do we want to or need to intervene? And we need to intervene very quickly and very early. And the reason being is because this this, um, incident is traumatic and this affects the child 
mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, in every way. And if a person has gone through a traumatic event and they're not getting any support or any help, left alone, the dark thoughts that will take over their mind would cause them, would drive them to a place of, I could say, I could even say insanity, where their behavior could become in school, they'll just be picking fights and yeah. looking for trouble. Yeah. The head teacher calling you all the time, the teacher, they don't know what else to do with your child. But the, the problem is not the other child teasing or your child teasing. That's far from the problem. The problem is what has happened to your child um, sometime back and what's probably still happening because sometimes it's happening in the family home. And you know, sorry, don't cut you, but more scarily in the church. And yes. this is not taught, it's not spoken about. No. And and so many, and, and it's, you know, if your child is church loving and loves going to church with you, sings in the choir, gets involved in all the activities, and all of a sudden they stop, but not going out with friends, not, not in that way, they're just withdrawn, they just want to stay in their room locked away every Sunday or Saturday or, or, or during those times, once again, look out for these things, because Absolutely. sadly... Our, 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 our churches are not exempt in this. It happens in the church. It happens in the home. So let's yes. not let's not be naive and blinded to what the enemy can be doing with our children out there. Yes, and mm. it happens in the it happens in the school. It can happen anywhere. Mm -hmm. It can happen anywhere. Those big family gatherings when people get together for Christmas and birthdays and everything, and the predator is there preying on the young children and laughing and playing with them, have them all on their laps and doing yeah. all of their dirty things. Mm -hmm. And we can't um, we can't turn a blind eye to these things. Sometimes it, it sometimes you have women involved and they, they know the men that are doing it and they are the cover up. Yeah, they cover and, for them. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um we need to be real. And the reason why we wanted to be so open today is because this is an ongoing thing. And most of the time when we hear about the stories and it's when the people become adult and sometimes they end up in prison sometimes somebody commits suicide and right from the church they're doing it too and then you say but i didn't know i didn't know and then we want to do well let's do a, a suicide prevention course in the church or a course in the school or a course in the university this thing has started long before that so we need to be wise and we need to understand and to know that it happens and it happens all around us. Now, I know parents, um, it's always difficult with parents, especially if you, as, as Makita touched on the single parent and you have um, your mother, say grandmother helping, uncle helping, and you know, sometimes you have people who help out with your children. And um, so when something like this happens, you, you feel that your hands are tied and you don't want to rock the boat because you don't know what you would do. That's your support system, part of your support system. And, um, but you have to stop there in, that, in the middle of that. And you have to say, this is where your values will come in now. You have to say, what is my most important value here? And if, if you can be honest and your child is your most important value, then you have to stand up and fight for that child. You are responsible for the child's protection and safety. And if you just zip it, and say nothing, it will not go away. You talk about it, yes, it may 
start a storm, or it may start a war, it may split the family, but you have to do what you have to do. And sometimes at that point, you may need to get some professional help and get some support, um, real support. Because sometimes when it's messy, if the whole family goes to church and then even the pastors may want to think that they will have to take sides and sometimes people are weak when yeah. they should be strong and yeah. they make bad choices or bad mm -hmm. decision and sometimes mm -hmm. people might think it, 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 it's easier to just um, you know say the child is probably lying or ignore what the child is saying mm -hmm. and so you ostracize the child or you because you're fearful or because you're not um, strong enough or courageous enough to stand up for a vulnerable person. And so you, you put your own fear and your own needs ahead of the child. Yeah, yeah. And you allow that child to go downstream and you think, you know, then everybody say how hopeless and the child will go from... Um, that behavior, most times young girls will go to prostitution because they feel so unloved and, and yeah. so wasted and so yeah. unclean that um, I might as well, you know, get money for it and they, yeah. they yeah. do it and they, they don't care about the risk, whether they get a disease, whether they die or anything, but it's born out of that pain and that yeah. hurt that they suffered. And for, for guys, sometimes they too may do the same, but sometimes they end up on drugs. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and let's not, let's not, let, let's listen, let's not be full. It's our boys too. You know, we talk a lot yes. about girls. It's our boys too. Yes. And it's the yes. same thing to look out for. If yes. they're withdrawn, if they don't want to go around certain family members, certain things that are happening, let's not be fooled. And the other thing I'd like to say, covering up, is yes. not going to serve at anyone. all at all because you cover up you're just per perpetuating and then what can happen as well those that have been abused become abusers because that's their outlet yes and it, and it just goes on and on and on so all this covering up i had a friend and um she came to me and she was weeping her heart out and i had to get to the bottom of what's going on and, she, you know, the church that she grew up in, she stopped going because of certain reasons. And she said it, it, it came out that the father had been abusing his sons for years and everybody knew about it. But for the sake of covering up and saving face, they covered it up, but it came out. And she yeah. grew up with that family, the covering yeah. up. I work, I, 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 I have, and I, I get the results. I get the aftermath of, of, of what's happened to these people, where it's been covered up and they've not been able to, to, to have an outlet to really talk. They now have men. They've got no self-worth whatsoever when they had such a bright future in front of them. And not but because it was covered up because to save face, because of the family, because of the church, because of the this, because of the that. Yes. And um, so if you're listening to us today, we don't want to leave you hanging, mm. but um, we will continue with this again because we want to talk about, you know, the, how you can help the child. And um, we want to help you too to, to build resilience in you, build resilience in your child. We want to show you how this thing could go and develop into even different forms of mental illness and, and stress and anxiety and how you can see it, pick it up, stop it, and things like that. So we will carry on with that with this um, again next week. But for right now, I just want to I want to pray for those of you who have been listening. I want to pray for the, the families that are affected by this. I want to pray for families that are having dark secrets and, and um, know what dad is doing or a son is doing to a daughter or a stepfather is doing to the stepdaughters or stepchildren or even their Sons, own father. The boys. 
any type of incest and abuse in, in families and home, know what a pastor is doing to people in the church or, or women in the church. And um, what we are hiding and trying to hide and trying to keep quiet, that thing is going to eat us like a cancer and destroy us, it will destroy our relationship with God, all the beauty that you know, should come out of us. It, it's covered, it marred, it buried. So we want to pray today because um, it's a heavy topic, but it's important. And if it's relevant to you, just join hands with us as we pray for, across the platform. So Father, right now, we just want to thank you, God, that even as you have given us this, this burden today to speak openly to mothers, to fathers, to families, Father God, I pray right now, God, that those who have been touching children and interfering with children, pastors and elders and members and, and even the family of God, people within the church, predators. Father, I pray right now that they would repent of their sins, repent of their, their foolish and wicked act, selfish act. And Father, that they would turn from sin unto you so that you, O oh God, can help, can, can forgive, can restore, can renew, can deliver, can set free. And we want to pray for the victims too, Lord, the children in the, all of this, the young people in all of this. Father, even the old men and women who were abused and are still carrying, living with shame and guilt and, and fear and poor self-esteem, Father God. And even mental illness, Lord. Some still, in, some in prison because of the, how they reacted and where they ended up. But today we just thank you for healing that comes from you, O oh God. We thank you for that river flowing into the homes, flowing into the hearts, flowing into the families, flowing into the lives of your people, O oh God. Father, touch and heal, restore and renew today, we pray, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Pray, amen, amen. And I know, uh, Brother Anthony, thank you, sister, thank you. Has, has touched. I know uh, Brother Anthony is going to give us the signal soon. So I just want to leave the listeners with this. If there is anybody that's listening in, a young person um, that's been affected by this, please talk to somebody. Find someone trusted that you know you can talk to. If there's any parents here in this conversation that are seeing any of these signs, please just talk to your child. Boy, girl, just talk to them and just to try and get to the bottom of what's going on. But let them know that they can talk to you. You'll believe anything that they have to say and that your priority is to make them safe yeah it's hard but whatever you're hearing from them you just have to hold that and hold that space for them so that they can express themselves and please we'll be here next week get ready to call in if you want to hear arts for any advice or you want to talk about anything even any signs just come and talk to us thank you inner insights ministries presents talk it out do you want support in finding your own solutions to life's everyday problems? Then join Minister Theodore Ackman for a time of finding solutions and answers on Growth Radio as we talk it out on Friday mornings from 9.15 a.m. to 9.45 a.m. To the saints, the table has been set, so take your place. There is no more condemnation, there is only grace. World Radio Gospel Radio, our way to help. World Radio Gospel Radio, our way to help. One king and one kingdom making people feel like family.
All right, all right, that's it there. All right, fully recording us.